tutorial starts with a song, <laughs> but it's only a few seconds long. <laughs> Let's get started with animation. Hi folks, don't ask me why there is a hand in this scene. I don't know, I just wanted to place a hand there. And I played with that hand qu quite a bit and you see a few rendered images at the end of this very brief tutorial because we're going to talk about the AI noise texture. Keep in mind we have materials, that's what we glue onto surfaces, but behind that material we can have textures, for example a checkerboard texture or a noise texture. There's a noise texture in um, Maya has been there for a very long time, but uh, preferably uh, we use the Arnold noise texture and that's what I'm going to show you. First of all, let us create uh, an interesting object. For example, when you're under curves and surfaces, you can choose uh, NURBS plane, go to NURBS plane, uh, make NURBS plane, make it bigger, and we need quite a few patches here because we're going to deform it slightly. We go uh, under modeling, we find the deformers and for example, you know, just try any kind of deformer. We have this one and we make it quite big actually, like this, and move it up. And together with the origin we can move it around. When we move only the sculptor, uh, we get uh, a messed up geometry. Okay, uh, I think I quite like it. And I select the surface and I go to edit and I delete by type the history. That means the deformer is gone but the surface is still the same. So we have a slightly distorted surface here. Right mouse click, um, a new material and we create an Arnold standard surface shader. And we need a light, obviously we go to Arnold and an area light and I place the area light, well, over here. And in order to see things properly, I untick normalize, I raise the exposure just a little bit and I duplicate, control D, this light and turn it around here so it has an effect from this side as well. So when we render the scene we do it in the interactive rendering view Arnold. And we don't need the grid because we have a surface now which is very gluey and that's what the, that's the first thing we're gonna uh, change. We select the NURBS plane. Here we have the uh, shader, the s surface material and we reduce the weight of the specularity to zero, so it's not glossy anymore. And we give it another color like this light blue. And in order to see this properly, we just select the shader, which means we deselect the geometry. So this is our surface. I think we can move the second light further to the left. So gets more interesting. Now we come to the AI noise and I'm not going to use it for the color, I'm going to use it for the bump map. So it gives irregularity um, in the elevation of our surface. So we have uh, well a structure here which pretends that uh, it has little hills and valleys. It pretends because it's not a displacement map uh, but a bump map and a bump map is perfectly all right in most cases, but when you look at the bump map from the very side, you see that it's not actually producing hills and valleys. Where do we find the bump map here in the AI standard surface shader? Well, you need to scroll down and here you find geometry. I don't really know why it's under geometry because it really doesn't have to do with geometry. It's just a fake shadow thing, but uh, nevertheless, we can do this. Um, let's select this so we deselect the surface here. Um, when we lower the opacity, the surface just 
disappears. That's not interesting for us. We want a bump mapping and that's why we click on that checkerboard. We go to Arnold and to texture and here we see cell noise, checkerboard, curvature, flakes, AI image, that would be an image, a photograph for example, and here is the AI noise. When I click on it, a window appears which you probably don't like. But it's not dramatic at all. Until now nothing has changed on our surface and um, the left part feeds information into the right part of this window. Uh, so currently nothing does anything. <laughs> we open the out color and here we have three color values, the red, green and blue. And it doesn't matter which one we choose, for example the red, uh, because it's all black and white anyway. So the values in the, in the black areas are all zero for red, green and blue. And in the white areas they are all one, red, green and blue, and the gray values are something in the middle, like 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. So we use the out color of our AI noise and feed it into the bump. Here you have the bump value and the bump depth. The bump depth tells us how deep the bump is simulating depth and hills. Uh, and uh, this is the crucial value here which we want to map, the bump value. And the bump well value is here. And actually the bump already appears here, but we can also map it to the bump depth. I'm just going to show you this. Uh, so um, the bump value is matching exactly the bump depth, which is fine, but which we don't need here for our demonstration purposes. Now we have a not very convincingly looking bump map with a noise filter, with a noise texture, uh, but it's easy to do this. We click on this uh, icon and here we see the noise attributes and that's the beautiful thing about the noise. Let's go to the other side because here it's a little bit brighter and uh, now we raise the octaves. Now it gets really funky and it simulates shadows. That's why we think we actually have a deformation, but we don't. When you look at it from the side, it's a perfectly round structure and a perfectly straight structure. But from these angles here, it looks quite um, hilly. So these are the octaves. When you reduce them to one, it starts r very simply and often frustrating. So we'll just raise the octaves of this uh, noise texture. The distortion is also good. You see it gets very detailed now. Let us lower the distortion again. And raise it again. The amplitude, of course, is telling us how strong the effect is. And even with very little values, you get quite an effect. For example, this is 0 0.02. And this is 0 0.05. And this is 1. And uh, finally, I want to talk about the scale. Uh, when you press the control key and change the values here. Um, you see this is the amplitude, but we can do the same with all other values. And for example, the scale is quite dramatic because when we reduce the scale in X, we have a flow of our texture in one direction only. And here you see that we have a lot of detail, high resolution, because we have a lot of isoparms here and here we don't have that many. Now when we re reduce this, we go back to a more or less normal state, normal view as we had before. And when we reduce this to a negative value, for example, we get a different approach again. Well, you can map the AI noise to any kind of material parameter. I just try it out. I just wanted to reduce the frustration with the mapping of the AI noise to the bump value. 
And here we go. And I show you a few renderings with a hand. Sorry about this. I have no explanation for the hand in this strange animation. Have a nice day. Bye bye.